Welcome to episode number 436 of Get Paid for Your Pad. And today we are talking about 2021, what happened in 2021 in the short term rental industry. And who better to invite for that topic than the one and only Mr. David Jacoby, the president and co founder of Hostly, not CEO, the president and co founder. All right, Jasper, thank you for having me. I miss you. It's been a while. And I think back to the, the good old days when we had our show together and you had just reached uh, episode 100, I think. And that was a huge milestone. And boy, that's we're like the old timers now. That's right. Yeah. I don't even know how many times you've been on the podcast. It, you know, at some point we were doing one uh, almost every week or once a month or. Yes, we did a news uh, news update every every week or every couple of weeks. But yeah. I've, uh, because I'm not on as much anymore, I will just remind all the, the new listeners how much you've had an impact on me before Hostly even started. I would I would do a random you know search in the podcast uh, for the Apple Store to see what's available for Airbnb, and, and you came up, and that little darn jingle hooked me right away, and that's all I listened to as I was thinking of the idea of hostfully so uh you've, you've always had a special place in my heart and get paid for your pad specifically has as well and uh when we started growing for us to be the first sponsor of get paid for your pad that was a huge deal for us like a big win wow jasper believes in us and and he wants us to to be a sponsor uh so just thank you for all your support over the years yeah for sure and no, i appreciate appreciate those words i'm uh you know you've my heart warms up uh, as you as you're saying that, um, but yeah, we uh, yeah, it's been a while, right? I mean, we probably met like seven years ago or six years ago for the for the first time. What, when did you found Hostly? 2015, so six 2015. years ago. Yeah, yeah. So that was right a, a year after I, I launched the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So um, so let's dive into it. Uh, uh, 2021. What a year! What a year for the short-term rental industry. <laughs> Indeed, sure. Uh, so w- one thing that I, I feel is is pretty consistent is that nothing was consistent. So uh, 2021, there were lots of changes, of course, from 2020. So either there was more competition, or there was less competition, or people had one problem in 2020, they kind of figured out, figured it out and had another problem in 2021. Uh, on the competition side, just like speaking high level, 61% were reported that they had more competition in 2021 than the year before. But what's interesting about that is that everyone who said they had more competition, they also reported a big increase in income. So competition isn't necessarily bad, right? It makes me think back to uh, Burger King's strategy when they started, they would look to see where there was a McDonald's and that's how they knew where to have a location. They just open up wherever wherever the McDonald's was, they'd have that. Uh, so you see these big changes in, in market dynamics, both more competition and also less competition. So in some places, uh, so let me let me back up. Actually, uh, we started really broad with this. Um, we do a report every year. We, we put out this survey and over 150 property managers filled it out and we asked them how things are going. So how, what's gotten better, what's gotten worse, what have been your challenges, um, what's been, what solutions have you found, what's your favorite software, stuff like that. Um, so this is where this information is coming from and you can download it at postfully.com slash 2021 report. So back to what I was talking about, many places had more competition, also lots of places had less competition. So in 2019, before the pandemic, no one was saying they had less competition. Only 3% in 2019 reported that. Uh, But in 2020, 18% said there was less competition. And in 2021, 16% reported less competition. So the pandemic has caused many places to have less competition, yet those with more competition have reported more revenue. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's, it, it actually makes sense to me because I, I think what I what I noticed in 2021 is that a number of markets are just absolutely crushing it. Right. The remote markets, the secondary markets, the market that we just moved into, Idlewild, um, the competition have been going up there as well. But so has average daily rates. 
because there's just so much demand. So I feel like in, in those places, in those marketplaces where we see an increase of competition, that's the same area where we see a massive increase in demand. I would say a, a larger increase in demand than supply, right? So even though competition is increasing, um, it's the ADRs that, that are going up as well. And that's, what it, that's what's attracting the, that competition, right? Versus the, you know, the, the big cities, right? That we, that's probably where we're seeing the decrease in competition, especially with the regulations that have popped up. Every, every year there's more regulations popping up in, in, in the major cities, right? Would you, would you say that's, that's accurate? Definitely. I, I do think there is a, a, um, a clear path on the differentiation you made with the cities versus more traditional vacation rental areas. And, and you are seeing the, the OTAs, Airbnb, Verbo, they are really working hard to increase supply. Right. So Airbnb, with all the changes they made to kind of to to kind of fudge supply of a certain area by having more flexible searches. Right. So if you search for Tahoe, uh, maybe it'll show other places or, or they're really promoting. I'm open to to anywhere to really show more more supply than a targeted area. Uh, and Verbo themselves, they, they made a big push to get Airbnb hosts onto their platform and say, you know, if you list on other platforms, we'll show we'll show those rankings and we'll have you you know count as like a preferred partner already on Verbo uh, and even Expedia they are now pulling lots of inventory from Verbo to show vacation rentals on their site so everyone's trying to get supply yeah yeah but uh, you know there's limited supply especially you know having the experience now in, in Idlewild there's, there's just not a lot of more properties that are available you know and also with there's only a certain amount of short-term rentals that these type of smaller places want to allow, right? So there's also like, it's not easy to just build something down there because, because, you know, Eric and I are, are, are planning to, you know, to potentially build some, some extra cabins on our, on our property. And, you know, there's a whole, there's a process uh, for that. It's not, it's not so easy. So there's only so much demand that I think they can, or the supply that, that that can be added to those smaller markets, but demand is just demand is just out of control in those in those areas, and we're seeing a very different guest avatar that's that's visiting those areas, right? And you know, I I can understand like w- why that's happening because I was actually one of those one of those people. Like I was in Barcelona, and uh, because of the lockdowns and stuff, like I didn't really get to travel internationally. And so instead, what I did is I, I just looked in my in the region, right? Like, well, if if I'm gonna go somewhere near Barcelona, I want to go somewhere cool, right? So I looked up and I ended up staying at this castle, and that I would have never stayed there if it wasn't for the pandemic. But now I've discovered that that area, right? So now I want to go back there. Um, so you know, I think that I think that there's like a lot of the traditional vacation rental markets. I think in the past they were pretty reliant on like kind of people that come every year that have been coming there for a while. And now you're seeing like a, a whole different group of people that are, uh, that have discovered those, those areas. Yeah, definitely. And there's some, some trends there with marketing and what we've noticed uh, on the change of marketing from 2020 to 2021, uh, that marketing was both a, a big growth strategy in 2020, we always ask people, you know, how are you planning to, to grow your, your revenue or your business? Uh, and that was a big strategy in 2020. It was also a big challenge, a big pain point, uh, right? Because they were uh, focused on new markets, on getting local or getting first responders or, or just, you know, different, um, different social media marketing on Instagram. Uh, but in 2021, that was actually less of a focus. So. Uh, in 2020, uh, 14% reported it as their biggest challenge, and in 2021, only 5% uh, reported it as their, their biggest challenge. So that was like a big focus last year as they were scrambling, and now they kind of figured it out uh, a little more so this year and, and focus on some other things. Uh, there's also a big, kind of, big difference between uh, the, the size of the property management company and, and where they're getting reservations from. So... If you were smaller, if you're under 50 properties, uh, around 50% of your reservations are coming from Airbnb, and maybe 12 to 20% are coming from Verbo, and only 18% are direct bookings. Uh, but if you're a large property manager, 
I was really surprised Airbnb was basically the same as Verbo. It was a little bit more. So 21% uh, of, of their bookings came from Airbnb, 19% from Verbo. But get this, 44% were direct bookings. Mm. So mm. larger property managers, they they spent a lot of time on marketing, uh, not just in 2020, but even, even years before. Uh, and they're getting a, a lot more direct bookings. Larger property managers are more likely to be on a property management platform as well. And that increases, it's easier to increase your distribution uh, when you're on a property management platform. Uh, and there's some new channels that we're seeing as well. So Marriott is, is the big new one. Their are um, uh, homes and villas uh, division. Uh, that's becoming popular. And as business travel increases, that's only going to get more popular uh, because of points. Business travelers can get their points by staying in hotels mm -hmm. and then use those points for the, the family vacation on the on the homes and villas side of things. Uh, and then we're seeing other, you know, websites like like Plum Guide. People mentioned about 20, 25 different other websites that they're getting bookings from. And some some new ones too, like CHBO. So corporate housing by <laughs> by owner. Uh, the the corporate version of, of Verbo. Uh, and, and my favorite one listed was Bud and Breakfast. Uh, dot com too so uh, uh, 420 friendly <laughs> website <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's hilarious um so that's that's a that's a lot of interesting stuff there um one thing that comes to mind is the what you mentioned about business travelers right that's uh i have uh, some friends who are corporates they work in corporate companies and that's a that's a big reason for them that they don't stay at airbnbs they always say like hey i get i get so many points like these guys have like platinum status at you know at these bigger hotel chains uh because they travel so much for work um that's something that uh do you think Airbnb is going to get into that at some point where they're going to have some sort of loyalty program for guests? I've heard them talk about that over the years. So I'm not sure how far they're going on that, but it would definitely make sense. Uh, I, I think business travel, it's going to be a while for that to get back to, to normal rates. So maybe that became less of a focus for them because of the pandemic compared to other stuff. But they were talking about that a few years ago. Uh, Expedia, that's another thing that, that can work for them since they have the, you know, they own Verbo. So they do have loyalty points and reward points as well. So you can do it for hotels there um, and then and then do a vacation rental. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's probably a matter of time, but it might actually be lower on their priority than it was before the pandemic. Somebody suggested to me that Airbnb should have, in, instead of uh, just having super hosts, they should have super guests mm -hmm. as well. I like that concept. Yes, definitely. They've, I, I know they've talked about that and they've informally talked about that. I remember at, even an Airbnb open way, way back many years ago, they, they had a, a guest on stage who had, you know, over a hundred stays in a year or something like that. And he was talking about his experiences as a guest. So um, I do love, as many people do, the, the two-sided uh, review process that, that Airbnb has. And I'm surprised that Verbo has, they do a little bit of reviews where the, the host can review the guests, but you don't actually write a review. It's just, you know, five stars on where they clean or quiet and, and stuff like that. And, and they should probably move into that to make it easier for, for yeah. property managers to know if the guest is good or not. Mm. Yeah. Talking about reviews, I was, I was thinking the other day how it's kind of crazy in Airbnb where the review system is, uh, it's almost like, um, you know, black and white. It's almost like, Bi binary right where it's like it's either a five star or it's not a five star you know what i mean and the four star is almost just like uh it's not you know a four star you would think if, if you talk to somebody who doesn't know airbnb you would say like ah oh, four stars sounds pretty pretty good right uh but it's really not so i was thinking you know i, I booked a hotel on booking.com a couple of days ago and i was just looking at the rating the ratings on booking.com and i was thinking maybe that's a better rating system you know, on booking.com where you rate from one to 10, because then it's not so much more of a, it's either a five star, it's not a five star. Well, what's interesting is it's not black and white when you're doing the review process. So it, they do ask about the overall say, but they also ask about cleanliness and about location and about communications and you're, and you're ranking all those one through five. Uh, but what shows is I think the main 
how was yeah. your stay, right? The overall, uh, yeah. The- so they, they they maybe could do a better job at ex- at exposing what the what the sub level rankings are um, that both the host and the guests spend a lot of time doing on the review. They are gathering a lot of information, so they they could do a better job showing that. Uh, yeah, and I agree. Like four star review for a property on Airbnb uh, as an average, that's that's pretty terrible. I mean, you're looking you're looking at 4.9 versus 4.7 is the difference between really good and so so it seems these days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so as I was looking at, at booking the com at different hotels, I was like, you know, one hotel has like a, a 9.2, and another one has like 8.8. And, you know, from my experience, like when on booking.com, if a property ranks, you know, higher than like a seven, you know, that's kind of like the, the zone where I feel like if it's below a seven, then I'd be wary, you know, I'd be worried to stay there. But if it's like an 8.1 or something or 8.7, like that's still pretty good, right? If you're, if you're ranking from one to 10. So I just feel like it might be a bit, a bit more of an accurate representation or it gives, yeah, it allows guests to be a little bit more accurate, I think, in, in describing the experience or rating Absolutely. the experience. Absolutely. It's important to read the reviews as well, see what people say. And in addition, uh, I've never been a big fan of the location uh, rating because there's nothing a, a host can do to, to actually change that, right? It's kind of, the, in my opinion, the guest responsibility to know where they want to stay and then, and then be happy with that. Because, okay, I get three stars for location. How can I, how can I fix that? Um, yeah. But while we're talking about reviews, one way to make sure to get five star reviews is to have an awesome, provide an awesome guest experience. And that was a, a big uh, topic in our in our report. We uh, started uh, with this report actually before Hostly was a property management software. So we've always had these hospitality questions in there. And it's interesting to see how, how guest communications and, and guidebooks have changed. Um, over the years, especially the past couple of years with the pandemic. So uh, two years ago, uh, when the pandemic, or last year, rather, 2021, 2020, when the pandemic uh, first hit, there was a huge jump in digital guidebooks. So we were, we were happy to see that, of course. Uh, it went from 24% to 55% of property managers were using digital guidebooks. Uh, and that's basically remained the same. Uh, uh, 50, 54% in, in 2021. Uh, but uh, so in 2020, 77% still used a hard copy, and that's gone down now to only 49%. So, mm-hmm. so what happened? I guess last year they left the hard copy in there and also started providing a digital guidebook. And then once that hard copy got all raggedy, uh, they just didn't replace it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a trend in, in throughout the world towards less touching things and more digitalization, right? Like, cause uh, you know, have you been to any restaurants um, mm-hmm. lately? Everywhere. Sure. It, you don't get a physical menu anymore. It's like a QR code everywhere now. Yeah. So th- right? thankfully only, only 5% reported that they only use a hard copy and nothing else as a way of sharing information and recommendations. So yeah. people are moving that direction. And we have some some qualitative answers where kind of people put in what, what do they do? Uh, and people have said like, you know, sharing Facebook page for recommendations or having a concierge service. Uh, but a, a popular response too that uh, surprisingly a bunch of people responded was that they, they use QR codes in the property um, that take you right to either the guidebook or, or directly to like a YouTube video on how to work the Keurig coffee machine or or the dishwasher or something like that. So people are getting used to QR codes now and, and you're seeing that yeah. on vacation rentals. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that uh, we, we might be implementing in our units as well, like QR codes that go directly to instruction videos. Because it just, that's, that's also saving uh, a lot of the questions as do the, the hostly guidebooks as well. That we're we're using we're using those too, because that's really like uh, as you know as we as Eric and I have uh, have onboarded these these four cabins in the in the last couple of months. That's uh, that's one thing that's uh, become super clear to me, and I've always known this, but like you know when you're onboarding new units and it, it's always uh, you know you get new questions, you get to learn the properties, and you it's always a a bit of a learning curve, right? Of like what what kind of questions do guests come with. 
you know so for example like we 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 get a lot of questions of like um where where are the light switches like people guess for some reason some guests in our properties they they're having trouble finding the light switches right so maybe we put up a qr code with a quick introduction video where it's like hey um let me walk you through the house and show you where you can turn on the lights Yes, having videos, having welcome videos in general, a little orientation video, um, highlighting the things, it's a, a great personal touch, especially as there have been a, a decrease in the number of in-person welcomes. I mean, lots of property managers never did that. Some would, would greet in, in person, have someone meet there. Uh, so now having those video walkthroughs, whether it's a general one or it's you know specific on, a, on an item, those are, are very helpful. And, and, and anecdotally too, just in our guidebooks, we're seeing a lot more videos in the guidebooks. So, so that's fun yeah. to see. Do you, yeah. Jasper, do you stay in the property like for a night or two? Well, I, I want to, um, but uh, I can't travel to the U.S. unfortunately uh, right now as I'm in uh, my application phase of, uh, of, of getting my, uh, my work visa. Mm -hmm. That's always a popular way to actually be a guest in your, in your property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I uh, like because I'm running the guest communication for these, for these units. So I, you know, I had to learn like everything about the units through like walkthrough videos that our, our CEO uh, Aaron, he, he, he took walkthrough videos of all the units. And so I've been watching those videos to understand, okay, there's the TV, where's the remote, you know, cause these are the type of questions that we're, we're getting. Right. So, um, but yeah, we've been able to, to cut down the questions quite a lot by, uh, by just putting those hostly guidebooks out there. So, uh, that's, that's already been a big help. Um, nice. one thing, um, you know, on the topic of, uh, of contact, uh, self, selfless check, self check-ins and contactless check-ins i mentioned I, I noticed in your report that smart lock adaptation has uh, shot up quite a lot in 2021 yes yeah absolutely you are we're, you're seeing more of that as an increase um that was a, a challenge for for many property managers in 2020 and they they figured that out and that became uh in, an easier uh something that was easier in in 2021 uh, more so too with smaller property managers. And I think the data with that one is because a lot of larger property managers actually already had smart locks in place uh, before the, the pandemic because they just focused on kind of, you know, scaling and automation. It was a lot, it was a lot more important versus a smaller property manager. They, they didn't need it as much. It was easier to either hand over the key or just deal with, with lock boxes and stuff like that. Uh, one thing that's, that's interesting from 2020 to 2021, we, we asked two questions. One of my favorite questions is if you could wave a magic wand and make one thing easier, <laughs> what, what would that be? Uh, and, and then on the flip side, we asked what has been easier in, in 2021 than, than the year before. And a lot of the same categories, same answers appear in both. So guest communications or uh, figuring out pricing, uh, turn, uh, turnover and cleaning management. And what that goes to show, I think, is how vast uh, the ecosystem is. And one year, it really depends on where you're at in your process of a property man as be of being a property manager. And mm -hmm. one year, something is a problem for you, and there's a solution out there. And you, you, you implement it, and then the next year, you report that that was easier. Uh, and <laughs> related to that is the fact that we asked people what was their most valuable software. And as a category, property management platform was, was by far the, the largest, and especially for larger property managers than smaller property managers. Um, but total, there were 56 different software that was mentioned as their most valuable property management software. So um, a lot of, I mean, as their most valuable software. Uh, so a lot were property management softwares, but then you also see Zapier and Zoho and one person put Facebook and then one person put Canva, Trello. Uh, so there really is a wide variety. And, and mm -hmm. what I always say, if you've seen one property manager's operations, you've seen one property manager's operations. They all, they all come into it differently and they all have different pain points. And luckily, there are solutions out there for them. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I remember when, when Eric and I put our first mastermind uh, in, in uh, Puerto Rico in 2019, 
we had uh, we had about twenty five uh, you know larger property managers uh, fly out and spend four days with us, and um, that was one of the biggest takeaways that I got from from that from those four days was every almost every single company was using a different PMS and they were u- using different you know different tools. No, almost nobody there was no consensus around like you know what's the best system to use. Every, everyone was using something uh, something different. Yes, and it's amazing to see how many smaller property managers are not even using a property management software yet, and they're and they're reporting that too. So as I said a second ago, like larger property managers, sixty nine percent said that the property management software was their most valuable software, and it was significantly less for for smaller property managers, about twenty yeah. thirty percent. Mm. But they also reported using Google Suite and uh, Microsoft Office as their favorite software that they rely on the most. Um, as well as the OTAs. So a lot of smaller property managers said, my favorite software is Airbnb and just listing directly on there and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Like if you're if you're you only have a few units, if you're small, then it's still manageable, right? To to do all that stuff in Excel sheets and stuff. Although I don't know, I feel I feel like there's some technology that where it's like it, it, it's even like the guidebooks, for example. Like to me, a guidebook is a no-brainer, even if you have one unit. Because it just saves time. It's not expensive. It improves the guest experience. So why wouldn't you do that, right? Versus like a PMS, it's like, well, if you have one or two units, you know, you can discuss whether, you know, a PMS is needed. But uh, but I think there's some kind of like no-brainer tools that yeah. everyone should use. I agree. I feel the same way for dynamic pricing. Uh, yeah. You know, personally, I think that's that's a no brainer and you should absolutely use it, especially because there's so many levers now where you, some people might object and say, oh, I know the pricing better than any software. But the whole point is you can set like a minimum and a maximum amount and how aggressive you want to be on the discount. So it, so it's not like it's it's not like Airbnb smart pricing where, <laughs> where you kind of press a button and, oh, my God, you're going to get it for a really low amount. What did I just do? Um, but you can really fine tune it and take advantage of both your knowledge of, of that neighborhood um, as well as these algorithms in place that are that are changing things up and knowing what the other supply and demand is on, on any given day. And, and we see larger property managers um, using that a lot more than smaller property managers. Larger property managers are reporting a lot um, bigger increase. Uh, and also those that reported a loss it, that if they were using a dynamic pricing company, it was um, it, it was significantly less than if they weren't using dynamic pricing. So it's kind of hedging their bets. It's helping them not lose money and it's helping them make even more money. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I'm really enjoying all the new customizations that the, the pricing tools are have been coming out with. Like we're using Wheelhouse and uh, it's almost like every week I get an email from them saying like, hey, we've got this new setting. You know, like you can do variable minimum stays now and dynamic this, dynamic that. So it's, uh, it definitely makes it, makes it really interesting. But I think one thing that I've noticed is pricing apps are no longer a, a tool where, like you said, like you just press a button and it kind of does what it needs to do. Um, you have to really like, it's a tool that you use in addition to your, yes. your own knowledge, right? And you really have to go in there and, and make sure that the settings uh, make sense um, in order to maximize your your profit or your Indeed. revenue. And, and to your point too, it's not just about uh, the price, but a lot can be done with the minimum stays too, and having different minimum stays for different times of year and, and yeah. changing the minimum stay as it gets closer. And orphan stays, I'm a big fan of configuring that, right? So if you have yeah. three night minimums, but you have two days in between two reservations, it'll automatically change to be two nights for that. So a yeah. lot can be done with that. Same thing with, with cleaning. Uh, we'll talk about one, one other software. That was a big category, of course, just cleaning and turnover management in general. And, and in 2020, it was a big pain point. Obviously, everyone was putting in new new protocols. Uh, mm-hmm. And same thing in 2021. But what was what's interesting is the different reason. So in 2020, the pain point around cleaning was putting in processes and implementing like a, a turnover management software to track that all. Uh, but in, in 2021, it was really about staffing levels. Uh, so, you know, the, the staffing issue in general that you hear about everywhere really applied to, to cleaning. And a lot of people were talking about how hard it is to uh, maintain good, reliable cleaners. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's that's something I noticed too in in our students group, especially in Legends X. It seems to be very tricky to uh to find uh qualified contractors, cleaners, but also also maintenance, like any type of contractors seems like there's a there's a bit of a shortage. Yes. Yeah, not not just in vacation rentals, but everywhere. So yeah, uh, hopefully things will turn around in that regards for 2022. Yeah. <laughs> um Talking about 2022, uh, you know, we've been we've been talking about 2021, kind of a recap, what's happened, what are trends, um, what are some expectations that you have for for 2022? Uh, well, ho hopefully more increased revenue for <laughs> for everyone, right? And that's what people are planning on. Uh, but they're what we're seeing from property managers, they're saying more focus on pricing, um, so implementing dynamic pricing, uh, and also adding more properties to their portfolio. So. That in 2020, that wasn't much of a growth strategy. Uh, they people were just like trying to hold down the fort. And then in 2021, you start to see more people responding with uh, increasing their their portfolio, and that's what people are doubling down on for next year, wanting yeah. to really grow and, and get more properties on board. Uh, uh, so in, in implementing dynamic pricing, increasing portfolio, uh, and then also upselling. Uh, but we see this every year. So property managers say that a big goal is for them to do more upselling next year, uh, mid-state cleaning, early check-in, extended checkout, uh, uh, partnering with tour and activity providers and, and reselling that. So everyone has the best of intentions, but then when we ask if you, if you actually did it, uh, a lot of people say no. So like people say, so 30 to 45% say they plan to implement it next year, uh, but only 10% actually did this this past year. And it was the same number, 30 to 45% last year say that they planned to, yeah. and only 10% did. So so we'll see uh, when that finally starts happening and, and that'll be a big big nut to crack and uh, lots of software are trying to work on that and make it easier for property managers. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely been a, a topic where a lot of people are talking about it, but not a lot of people are actually doing it. That's what we see in our, in our students groups uh, as well. So I, I don't know. I feel like it's just going to be the same next year. Like everyone will talk about it. No one will going to really do it, uh, especially like when people are focused on uh, adding more units. Like it's a question like, do you want to, how much effort do you want to put in? Like, you know, upsetting a few things here and there, making a little bit of extra profit or just going out and, and you know, increasing your portfolio. Yeah, you would, you would think too, as a property manager that's managing other people's properties, you're only getting 20 to 30% of the rent. So ha having these upsell opportunities, depending on your, you know, the business structure with the homeowner, you can be getting all the, the revenue, all the profit from these upsell opportunities. So in theory, it's a great way for property managers to, to increase their revenue mm -hmm. and not have to, you know, share such a big chunk with the homeowner. Uh, but the technology is, is hard. It's complicated. Yeah. It requires right now a lot of manual work or having you know, having a large team where you have people focus on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's the challenge, man. I think uh, I think people are trying to keep their businesses as, as simple as possible, and it's it's already like a fairly you know I'd say fairly complicated to business to run anyway in hospitality, right? Because you're dealing with people. It's twenty four hours. Like there's a lot of challenges already. So I don't know. Like uh, I I would say like I'm we're probably in, that's probably not going to be a big focus uh, for for us personally, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if people are going to really finally start uh, taking action in, in, in on that department. Well, I'm glad you're realistic about it because, as I said, many people want to and plan to and then yeah. don't. But you're you're good at setting goals and, and hitting goals, and I know all your Legends <laughs> X students are are really good at, at that as well. Yeah, yeah, I feel like um, I feel like. There's a lot of extra revenue that you can kind of squeeze out of your properties by and, and saving time by implementing systems and automation, really optimizing the pricing and doing retargeting, retargeting marketing, right? Uh, reaching out to your past guests and having them come back. Um, so I feel like I feel like that's the first thing that we have to really, really optimize um, before we we start, you know looking for different uh revenue streams that's kind of that's kind of our strategy anyway awesome awesome david it's uh, always so fun to talk to you man um any final thoughts before we wrap this up well that that went by fast so much more to talk about but 
it's okay. It's all there in the report. So everyone can take a look at it later. Once again, go to hostfully.com slash 2021 report and tons of information from you and your, your, your peers, you, the listener that is. So, I, you know, thanks to all the, all the listeners and all the property managers who participate in this report every year. A lot of the questions are the same every year. So it's fun to see how the changes have happened over mm -hmm. the years. Of course, we've had some, some new kind of COVID uh, section and, and a couple other questions, um, but it's fairly consistent. So I'd encourage everyone to check out this year. We also have, you know, last year and the year before as well, if you want to do any comparing. And I would love to hear your, your comments. So after you read the report, please uh, send me a note at david at hostfully.com. I'd love to hear from you. All right. Yeah, I highly recommend the report. I think it's uh, one of the best ones in the industry. If, if not, maybe it's even the best one in the industry. Uh, what do you, what do you think? Stuck, stop. And now there's lots of good reports, but this, this is a good one. We are very proud of it. And we also yeah. have a lot of expert insights in there. I forgot to mention. So uh, Jasper, thank you to you and to Eric as well for both providing some commentary and some insights into the report. So there's some quotes from, from each of you. You've, uh, you've both supported us in the past as well. Uh, and there's lots of other experts, about 20 or so yeah. experts that have added their, their two cents uh, about the report. Yeah, I think uh, I think you guys even gave me my my own personalized uh, uh, landing page where where I can send people uh, to check out the report. We might um, have to include that in the show notes, right? <laughs> yes, I will do. Like, uh, do I do I get some credit if if a lot of people go to my link or? You get a big hug the next time I see you. <laughs> new report. So <laughs> awesome! Um, all right, David. Uh, thanks for being thanks for jumping on the show. I'm sure you're going to be on the show back uh, in 2022. The question is not if you're going to be back. The question is how many times, right? Oh, stop it. Awesome, Jasper. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. And I will see you on the flip side. That sounds great. Thank you, David. And thanks to the listeners. We will be back on Friday with the next episode of Get Paid for Your Pet. Until then. <laughs>